On the 24th of May 2022, the Elizabeth Line finally opened. The Abbey Wood to Paddington section had seen severe delays during its construction, but on opening day at 6.30am, the first train on the line finally departed. Some of us were lucky enough to board it and take in a wonderful atmosphere. The ride across the line is remarkably smooth and each station has its own unique features to explore with hidden gems tucked away in every corner. In this two-part special, we traverse both halves of the line from Paddington to Abbey Wood as we explore every new station on the Elizabeth Line. We're starting the video at the Paddington end of the line. The new Elizabeth Line station is an architectural masterpiece that Brunel himself would have been proud of, and there are several nods to his legacy scattered throughout. And here's where you can find the first of many hidden gems. These handrails were modelled after Brunel's original station design. Speaking of Brunel and the main station, the Elizabeth Line neatly integrates with the original GWR mainline terminus and its concourse. Access underneath the old clock arch or the new crossrail arch makes this transition seamless. Here's a top tip for the spotters among you. These Elizabeth Line entry points are directly next to Platform 1, a fantastic location to watch the mainline trains coming in and out of the Grand Old Station. Now let's head back to the Elizabeth Line station. Before we head down to its concourse, note the artwork created here by the school children from Marleybone Boys School. Artwork like this is featured at all nine of the new stations on this part of the line to celebrate the opening. Additional Brunel inspired artwork is also present here at street level on these panels. Next down to the concourse. The natural lighting, vast space, step free access and entry points to the platforms are all key features of each of the stations along the route, with Paddington being one of the most impressive. From an aesthetic standpoint, Everything from the brickwork to the lighting designs looks splendid. As well as its integration with its mainline counterpart and other underground lines, there's also easy direct access here to the Bakerloo underground line, which includes a step-free option. It also leads you to another hidden gem with more Brunel-inspired artwork present in the walkway between the respective lines. Down then to the Elizabeth Line platforms for the trains to Abbey Wood. Again, beautifully designed and wonderfully spacious, able to cope with the large number of passengers going about their new rush hour routines. Before you leave for the next station, another hidden gem can be found. Head to the very end of the eastern ends of the platforms, peek through the doors and get a close up view of the trains arriving from inside the depths of the crossrail tunnel. And you can do the same on the eastbound platform to watch trains depart. Onwards then to Tottenham Court Road, but before we reach the first stop, we pass through Bond Street. At the time of making this video, Bond Street isn't currently open to the public, although they do reduce speed heading into the station while work is carried out, which does allow for a sneak peek at what's to come. The two new ticket halls and connections to the Jubilee and Central Underground lines will be another welcome boost to commuters once the station opens in the autumn of 2022. So our first actual stop, post Paddington, heading eastbound, is Tottenham Court Road. There are exit points for Tottenham Court Road itself, Dean Street and the Central and Northern Underground lines. Note the curved platforms here, a subtle difference compared to the layout of other stations along this route. The platforms here are around 234 metres long and there's also the ability to extend them in the future to accommodate more passengers in the coming years. Head towards the end of the platform towards the Western Ticket Hall to spot one of our first hidden gems here with this roundel wayfinding design feature. The design covers the Soho street map and the roundels indicate the entrances. There are more of these panels with different colours around the exits of the station as an additional means of helping you get your bearings and finding your designated exit point. These light drums are another hidden gem in their own right, specifically designed by the architects in their own words to create a Soho-esque theatrical effect. 
There's also been significant regeneration of the area around the station's entrances as part of the wider Crossrail project. Now we've explored Tottenham Court Road, let's move on to Farringdon. So, Farringdon. Change here for connections to the Hammersmith and City, Circle and Metropolitan Lines and to the national rail platforms served by Thameslink trains. Speaking of Thameslink, click the link on the top right of the screen to check out a video detailing 101 facts about the history of Thameslink. After previously seeing the curved style platform at Tottenham Court Road, Farringdon's long straight platforms of around 244 metres in length give you an idea of the size and scale of the Crossrail project. Up above, the concourses here are very special. There are a number of intricate designs and nods to items synonymous with the goldsmiths, blacksmiths, watchmakers and other popular historical trades in the area. A perfect location to find some quite literal hidden gems. The diamond-shaped design on the sloping ceiling nods to the area but also the weaving railway lines across the different links. In another step-free success story and hidden gem of the station, Farringdon is one of the stations along this route to have the rather funky diagonal lift running across the step escalators. We leave Farringdon and make tracks to Liverpool Street. So we conclude part one by visiting Liverpool Street. A massively important interchange on this route, perhaps the truest example of the term crossrail yet. This was by far the most complex of the new build stations along the route, navigating around some of those existing lines, rivers, sewers, the post office railway system and much more. Liverpool Street boasts the most connections available from the Elizabeth Line. Apart from the network rail link, you can board underground services on the Central, Circle, Hammersmith and City and Metropolitan Lines from the existing stations of the same name, plus the Northern Line platforms at nearby Moorgate. You can also change over to the other section of the Elizabeth Line from here. The canopy here is a hidden gem in itself, neatly situated away from the hustle and bustle of the rest of the infrastructure and with a similar canopy design to the Paddington entrance. Around the area you can also take a look at the construction being undertaken around the Moorgate entrance. For the next hidden gems, look up. The folded concrete designs here found on the ceilings are nods to the same Portland stone material used on some of the buildings around the local area. And just like at Farringdon, a diagonal lift adds to our list of hidden gems at this site. At platform level, these totems guide the way from end to end, with lighting also pointing up to the ceiling. From here, our journey will continue east towards the likes of Whitechapel, Canary Wharf and Abbey Wood. In part two, we'll visit all five of the remaining stations, uncover more hidden gems and tell you everything else you need to know about this part of the route. For now though, I hope you enjoyed part one of this exploration of the Elizabeth Line. Let us know in the comments about some of your own hidden gems that you've discovered along the line. If you enjoyed the video, please smash the thumbs up button, click to subscribe and tap the notification bell to be among the first to see the channel's latest uploads. Bye for now and see you shortly for part two.